So uh, I'm going to first uh, start by explaining uh, the model that we worked in and uh, the functionalities the, that we are dealing with is uh, what called the client server functionalities. So what are these functionalities? We are dealing with two parties uh, in this case. So on the left we have a server and on the right we have a client. And the server holds some input X and the client holds some input Y. And the client wants the help of the server to uh, help him compute some function F. So they send messages back and forth until only the client uh, learns the output of the functionality. And in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, information theoretic security uh, for these types of functionalities. However, uh, in this model, uh, not much can be done. Only trivial functionalities can be computed with information theoretic securities, uh, information theoretic security without any additional setup or assumptions. So the, the model that we're working on, which I will elaborate a bit more uh, later on, is the OT hybrid model. And in this model, similarly to the previous uh, slide, they can interact with each other and send messages back and forth. However, now they have uh, an idealized access to some uh, OT functionalities where they can ask uh, some trusted uh, party to compute uh, oblivious transfer for them. And uh, we know that in this model, uh, basically any, any client server functionality can be computed with statistical security. So we, we, have, we know that everything can be computed. Or what we ask in this paper is what about perfect security? And it turns out that uh, not much uh, was known. Only a handful of functionalities were known to have a perfect uh, secure protocol that uh, computes them. And we also are interested in the run complexity of such protocols. So uh, what did we show? So uh, informally, we showed that uh, almost any client server functionality can be computed in the OT hybrid model uh, with perfect security. So we uh, don't allow any error uh, whatsoever uh, in this uh, protocol. And uh, this uh, protocol works against uh, malicious adversaries. And like we, I said, we are also interested in the run complexity and our protocol has a single round in it. And this is achieved by uh, querying the OT oracle uh, many times in parallel. And uh, for this talk, uh, I'm only going to uh, talk about uh, deterministic Boolean functionalities, but uh, our protocol easily generalized to non-Boolean uh, uh, randomized functionalities as well. Okay, so good. Uh, so now I'm going to elaborate a bit more about uh, the model that we're working on to try and formalize the, uh, our result. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, the oblivious transfer functionality. Specifically, what we are using is the one out of two bit OT. Here, the server uh, has two inputs uh, bits, two input bits, A0 and A1, and the client has a single bit B. And now only the client receives uh, an output, which is A sub B. And the server learns nothing uh, about B, and the client doesn't learn anything about the other bit. And uh, what is this good for? Uh, we know that uh, oblivious transfer is used in uh, many MPC protocols, and it generally it implies statistical uh, uh, secure MPC protocols. We, we know that we can compute it very efficiently using what's called the OT extension, which can also be done in pre-processing time. Uh, we know that uh, many computational assumptions uh, realizes OT, and we even know that physical assumption uh, can uh, be used to construct OT uh, with unconditional security. And now I can uh, formally define uh, our model, the OT hybrid model, and define security. So what, how do, what is the OT hybrid model that we're using? So again, like I said before, they can call uh, an oblivious transfer functionality at any time in the protocol. However, one thing that I want to stress is that they can do this in parallel. They can call the OT uh, functionality many times in parallel. And when do we say that this uh, uh, protocol is secure? Uh, we're going to use an ideal, a real ideal paradigm where uh, in the ideal world we have a, a trusted third party that cannot be co-opted and the computation is done as follows. The server and the client send their inputs to the trusted party which then compute the output and give it only to the client. So the server learns nothing. And what we would like to have is that the OT hybrid model uh, to emulate this ideal interaction. And we also want this to hold even if a malicious adversary is present. So if a malicious, uh, for any adversary co-opting the server, we can simulate uh, the attack in the ideal model. 
So there exists an uh, ideal, uh, uh, there exists a malicious server in the ideal world that is also allowed to change the input that it sent to the corrupted party, which also affects the output. And we want uh, that this simulator, this malicious adversary in the ideal world, to simulate the view uh, of the real-world adversary, of the real-world server. And we want these two to be uh, quite close. So uh, what I mean by that is that the statistical distance between the two worlds are, uh, is uh, very, very small. And when I, I say that uh, we have perfect security, I mean that uh, there is no difference. The distributions are, ident are identical. And again, we also want the security versus a malicious client. So for any malicious client in the OT hybrid model, there exists a malicious client in the uh, ideal model that uh, can simulate the view of the real world client. Okay, so uh, what do we know uh, about this model? Well, so I'm going to talk about both the statistical uh, protocol, statistically secure protocol, and perfect uh, secure protocol. And I'm going to start with the statistical one. So we have the classical result by Killian that shows that any, any client-server functionality can be computed in the OT hybrid model with statistical uh, security. And uh, 20 years later, Ishai, Prabhakaran, and Sahai showed that uh, how to do it uh, a lot more efficiently. And three years later, uh, Ishai, Kushilevitz, Ostrovsky, uh, Prabhakaran, and Sahai also showed how to do it in a single round. Uh, with uh, parallel calls to the OT, and their protocol is also efficient for NC1 functionalities. So this is the statistical setting. What about the perfect setting? Uh, well, it turns out that we don't know uh, a lot. Uh, what we do know, uh, a protocol by uh, uh, Brassard, Crepeau, and, uh, uh, and uh, Sansa showed that we can compute one out of N string OT in this model. And again, this is a single round protocol. Uh, Wolf and Wolschläger showed that uh, OT is symmetric, meaning what they call, they, we can compute what they call TO, which is the same as OT, where the roles of the parties are reversed. And in a slightly different model, uh, Ishai, Kushilevitz, uh, Orlando, and uh, Paskin Chernyavsky showed, and Melgard showed that uh, if the parties has uh, correlated randomness, then anything can be computed with perfect security. Okay, however, the correlation uh, depends on the functionality to be computed. Otherwise, uh, and uh, we have also a classical result, which is uh, in the multi-party setting. Uh, we have the BGW and the CCP uh, protocols that show that any multi-party functionality can be computed with perfect security in the plane model, assuming uh, that the adversary corrupted strictly less than one-third of the parties. And Basically, that's it. That's all we know in the perfect setting. And it should be understandable, I mean, why should we care about perfect security? If we have uh, statistical security, which is un it's still unconditional, it will hold against any unbounded adversary, and, uh, and the security would hold for uh, basically eternity, so why should we care about perfect security? Well, first of all, it's very natural. If we, can, if we have a uh, statistical security, can we push it further and get no error at all? And this is also a part of secure uh, MPC, so we, might, so we need to understand this uh, setting if we want to understand general secure computation. And even on the practical uh, side of things, it's very, it could be very useful, since if we can construct efficient uh, protocols in this, uh, with perfect security, then their efficiency is concrete since we limited, eliminated the dependency on a security parameter. So again, uh, what is our result? I can now tell you uh, more formally. So we showed that almost anything can be computed with perfect security in the client-server setting. So what is this almost all? That's the only thing I haven't told, told you yet. So almost all means uh, is the class of functionalities which are called full dimensional, where we also need to assume that the server's domain is strictly larger than the client's domain. And what is this uh, full dimensional creature? Uh, so I'm going to explain it pictorially with an example. So let's say we have this function. The server chooses uh, a row and the client chooses a column. And the uh, output is in uh, the corresponding entry. So we can view this function as a collection of three points in the plane, which gives us a triangle. Since the triangle is a two-dimensional object, we say that this function is full dimensional. And uh, this uh, definition easily generalizes to uh, larger functionalities where we consider F uh, as a collection of X points over Ry. 
and we say that f is full dimensional if the convex polytop that is, that is defined by this collection of points is of dimension y. Okay, so uh, what is our construction? So uh, I'll start with a very high level overview and then I go, go into more details. So first, we start with the statistically secure ICOPS protocol. Let me remind you, this is uh, one, a single round protocol that achieves statistical security. And what we do is we identify two key issues in the, the protocol that prevent it from achieving perfect security. And we modify the protocol accordingly, and the resulting protocol will have perfect security against a malicious client for any functionality, even if it's not full dimensional, and the full dimensional part comes into play when we consider malicious adversaries. Okay, so I'm going to uh, now give a brief overview of the ICOF protocol. So for simplicity, let's assume that the function uh, is Boolean deterministic and also that the client input is a single bit. So here's a starting idea. Let's say that the server will compute the two possible outputs, f of x0 and f of x1, and send the correct one to the client using uh, the OT. Again, so the server can do whatever he wants, so what uh, we'll ask him to do is also send sort of proof of correct behavior using what's called the, the MPC in the head paradigm. So how does uh, it look? So I'm going to explain it uh, pictorially. So we have the server on the left and the client on the right, and the server, uh, imagine in its head, a secure multi-party protocol being executed. So it has many virtual servers, each holding a, a share of the original uh, server's input, and what they compute is a functionality that has two parties, two virtual clients that will receive an output, where the first one will receive f of x0 and the second one will, will receive f of x1. And as we said before, the server will send the correct output using the OT functionality. And now in order to prove that it behaves honestly, it will send what's called a watch list. And the watch list is basically just a subset of the virtual server's views. So he will send, uh, let's say, these two servers to the real client, which then check for consistency. And if he finds some inconsistency, then he knows that, uh, that the server cheated, and he will output an, uh, a default value. And uh, each view will be given with some constant probability, and this can be implemented using the one out of n string OT protocol that I previously mentioned that uh, it exists, the protocol of BCS. However, there is a still slight issue with this uh, protocol. It's still not secure because a malicious adversary can perform what's called a selective abort attack. Basically, what it can do is just tamper with one of the virtual clients and change its uh, output. And now, uh, we cannot simulate this attack because it basically the server said, on this set of inputs, you will output a default value, and on this set of inputs, you will output a correct value. So we cannot simulate this. So how I could solve this, they solved it, uh, I'm going to simplify the solution, they gave a much more efficient one, uh, but the simple solution is the following. The client will first uh, split its input, uh, its input bit, uh, will share it and represent it as uh, the XOR of many random bits, and now instead of uh, one pair of virtual clients corresponding to one bit, we will have many virtual, uh, many pairs of virtual client, each pair corresponding to one of the random bits that the client uh, sampled. So the client will choose either the left or the right one based on the, in, based on the value of the corresponding random bit that is sampled. And now why does this work is because the server would need to guess these random bits. And uh, you will only be successful with uh, negligible probability. However, now it's not clear what values to give this virtual client because we need to ensure consistency of, the, of all the possible choices. And I'm not going to, not going to get into too much details, but uh, there is something called a decomposable randomized encoding, where, which is basically, you can think of it as a, an abstraction of garbling scheme that also allows for information theoretic uh, security. Uh, so we know that it, it exists and we can use it. And this is the final uh, ICOS protocol. So what are the two issues that prevent it from achieving perfect security? So the first one is with respect to the client. We said that the, each virtual view is given with some constant probability to the client, meaning that there is a non-zero probability that the client will receive all of the virtual server's views, and therefore it will learn the server's input. So we need to deal with that. 
And the second issue is that uh, the server can still uh, attack. There's a non-zero probability uh, chance of attacking. For example, he could, he could try and guess the random bits of the client and apply the selective about attack. So there's, uh, this is the second issue. So now I'm going to explain how we resol resolve these issues. So um, I'll start with the first one about the client. So what we would like to compute is a fixed size watch list, something of size uh, exactly, let's say, T, which basically amounts to computing T out of N uh, string OT in order to get the views. However, we don't know if we can do it uh, with perfect security. It's still an open question. But what we can do is we can ensure that no malicious client will uh, learn more than 2T of the views. So how it, uh, is it done? First, the server will sample a very, very long random string and split it into n random strings, uh, where n is the number of virtual servers. And uh, additionally, he will share this long random string in an n minus 2t out of n secret sharing scheme. And now he will give uh, the client a choice. Either you will get a masked view or you will get uh, a share. So why does this work? If the client shows too many views, too many masked views, then it will not uh, be able to reconstruct the masking itself because it doesn't have enough shells. So we have security against the client. What about the server? Uh, the, server uh, the security against a malicious server follows basically from the error correction properties of the secret sharing scheme. Uh, I will not go into too much detail, but uh, basically because this is only the proof of correct behavior part of the larger protocol, uh, this doesn't affect the original protocol. So the, we have stat still have statistical security against the server. So what about the second issue, about the server being able to still attack with non-zero probability? And the way we solve this is uh, using ideas from the Furnace literature. So in Furnace, uh, it's a different model, it's a different, different context where either both parties receive the, uh, the output or none of them do. And it turns out that using similar ideas can help us here. So what do we do? It's very simple. Instead of having the client output a default value if he found some inconsistency, he will choose x0, the input of the server, uniformly at random, and output accordingly. And uh, the second thing that we need to do is having the parties execute the ICOPS protocol, the modified ICOPS protocol that I just showed you, with a very large security parameter. And what we show is that uh, this actually achieves perfect security, assuming that the function that the parties compute is full dimensional. And so I'll not go into too much detail because this is a bit technical. So to sum things up, uh, what we showed, we gave a f the first uh, perfectly secure protocol for a, a very large class of uh, client-server functionalities in the OT hybrid model, which, also, also achieve a, which is also a single round protocol. Uh, natural question, what about the functionalities that we are not able to deal with, uh, those that are not full dimensional, for example, equality? We don't know uh, the status of this function. Uh, another question is about the efficiency. Our protocol is uh, not very efficient since we needed to execute the ICOS protocol with a very large security parameter. And uh, will additional rounds uh, help us uh, in answering this question? That's it. Any questions before the break? Uh, yeah. What does uh, very large mean? Uh, very, very large. We, if, so uh, we wanted the error uh, in the simulation to be uh, some epsilon, where epsilon is one over the size of the client's domain factorial. So we need very small error. Uh, I have a question. So you said you replaced the default value input with the randomized input? Yeah. So does it help you if it's not uniform? Uh, we can use a non-uniform distribution. It doesn't uh, help uh, much. To you achieve. don't get more functions, is my question. Uh, no, it, we don't get more. Fu uh, the only thing that could help us is uh, to get more function is if we somehow sample x0 uh, with a probability that depends on the view of the client. Here we sample it independently of what the client saw in the protocol. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, another question. Uh, this may be a stupid question, but like, is there any natural generalization to a larger number of parties? 
uh, natural generalization. Uh, maybe a uh, lot of servers and one client or uh, one server and many clients. So you need to check a consistency that uh, the server use the same input with all of them, for example. Uh, and do you think your result also extends to this type of uh, settings? What? Do you think the result also extends? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, I don't know how to do it. We don't, we okay, don't know. Okay, so let's thank Bar again. And, uh,